Я сразу включу на альфа. Учащение импульса сразу же. Как только вот внутрь дота заходишь в помещение, сразу учащение импульса. Он сейчас зашкалит. Отсыпай. Anton Kolomitsyn is what the Russians call a stalker. He roams the hidden nooks of the countryside, looking for lost relics of war. But earlier this year, while he was exploring old machine gun bunkers, he found something more than he'd expected. У меня в машине оказался дозиметр случайно. Я уже не помню, куда, зачем, почему там. Ну, вот я решил, давай, дай-ка я возьму, проверю на всякий случай дот, потому что фон был просто сумасшедший. The bunkers are relics of a Stalin-era campaign to protect Russia's northwest from invasion. They line the forests around the Finnish border. So the idea here of this is that, is that I don't want to get any particles to touch my skin, right? That's why we do this? All right. In the 1950s, the bunkers were updated with what was then a modern marvel luminescent radium paint, which glowed in the dark and was loaded with radiation. Today, the bunkers sit innocuously in people's backyards. Children play in their concrete frames, and scavengers break them down for metal parts. After his discovery this February, Anton called Viktor Tereshkin, an environmental journalist who published his findings in a local paper. They're returning to one of their earliest finds to see if the government has done anything to secure the site. После наших первых репортажей его закрыли. Вот можете посмотреть, вот как это сделано. И все. Ее очень быстро сломает. Я думаю, что летом ее уже не будет здесь. Anton and Victor have all but made it a personal mission to find the radioactive bunkers and warn people who live nearby. The government, they say, seems to pay little attention. This is no isolated incident. Decades after the Cold War, residue of Russia's unbridled experimentation with nuclear materials remains scattered across the country, still posing a threat to locals. Niels Bermer monitors radioactive waste in Russia for the environmental nonprofit Bologna. Problems with uh, radioactive contamination and radioactivity in Russia is quite widespread. You find it all over Russia in local areas. The whole started with the, the nuclear weapon race between US and Soviet in the end of the 40s. Especially in Soviet Union, there was a very huge uh, industry built up, a lot of secrecy surrounding the development of nuclear weapons in Russia. Now the people that have, are in living in this contaminated area or, ha, or have been evacuated have received very little information about the health consequences. In the Euro Mountains village of Muslimovo, residents have been struggling for decades with the consequences of a radioactive spill. In 1957, the reactor at a nearby nuclear plant exploded, triggering the largest radioactive plume in history. Today, its magnitude would be third only to Chernobyl and Fukushima. You've never heard of it, because until the 1970s, it was a military secret. How many people in the town do you think have had some symptoms from radioactivity? Venera Gusina is a local environmental activist. She and other experts say radioactive waste continued to be dumped into the village river for decades after the incident. In 2006, Russian officials moved the entire village to a new site, less than a mile away.
Думали, что потом только узнали, что это речка, а раньше ничего не думали. Вот я жила по улице Карла Маркса, из ста дворов я примерно подсчитала, сейчас в данное время человек шесть осталось живых. И купались они тоже. Я помню, как меня они купали в речке, когда я маленькая была. И мы же тогда не знали. Потом только нам узнали, что здесь радиация. Minafiza Batirshin grew up in the original Muslimovo. Her husband, Fakal, moved here 25 years ago. He's since developed massively swollen lymph nodes. Like much of the situation in Muslimovo, Fakal's exact diagnosis remains steeped in mystery. Outside medical experts say it can be hard to definitively trace any one condition to radiation. Do you have any doubt that your symptoms are related to radioactivity? No. Я когда вообще в деревне жил, у меня ничего не было, все прекрасно было. Как приехал сюда, начали. The uncertainty has left the family in limbo. Vakul says the government promised him free medical care if he can get to a major hospital. It's also offered a little money if the family wants to move. They say they still can't afford it. But do you wish that she and her family would leave town?